The Psalms are prayers and hymns of the Bible par excellence. Uttered in praise, joy, sorrow, and despair, spoken or sung in private and in public. By lay people, kings, poets, and priests, coming from both the righteous and repentant sinners, the Psalms have served as the prayer book and the hymn book. To generations of believers, for every man on every occasion can find in its Psalms. Well, good morning and happy Monday to you. I pray that everyone here in Whispering Hope family is doing well and you had a blessed weekend, a restful weekend, and that you're ready again another morning to study the Word of God together as a community of believers. Today we are here to study lesson number 12, entitled Worship That Never Ends. And today, Monday, March 18, we are studying the topic, Sing to the Lord a New Song. I would like to welcome each and every one of you and in particular, I would like to welcome my guests, my regular Monday panelists, Elder Vaughn Joseph and Elder Stacy Maskell. Welcome, Elder Vaughn and Elder Stacy, to Whispering Hope. Well, good morning, Sister Annick. Thank you so much. A big welcome to all those who are viewing, to you, Elder Stacy, as well. And I just pray, as usual, that the Lord will guide our discussion today as we look into his word once again. Happy to be here. Good morning to everyone. I also want to say good morning to everyone on the platform. And good morning, Sister Annick, Elder Vaughn. I'm happy to be here as well to engage in studying God's word. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Elder Stacy to pray for us at this time, after which Elder Vaughan will share some views or insights into the topic and the subtopic. Let us pray. Most kind eternal Father, we indeed happy that we could be here another Monday morning to look into your word, dear Father, to study of you and to learn more. And so, dear Father, I pray that you may open our understanding and impart the knowledge that you wish for us to know and continue to guide and help us, dear Father, with this discussion to help us to be clear so that we can better understand what you require of us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So the topic for the week, as you said, uh, Sister Anik, is Worship That Never Ends. That's the title for this week's study. And specifically for our uh, study for today, Monday, the title of the lesson is sing to the lord a new song so worship that never ends well this is not the worship of your house or your car or your job or your academic achievements this is the worship of god and so the title is saying worship that never ends we're looking at worshiping god unendingly meaning that we should never cease to worship our god and our creator and we're seeing it in these psalms here that the psalmist wrote how they took the time to write these songs that the congregation, that all those who come afterwards, those who were present, could actually relate and give them encouragement and upliftment towards praising and worshiping God. And so when we look at the topic for this week, and specifically for Monday, about sing to the Lord a new song, we know one of the ways in which we worship is through singing, to songs. And of course, the Psalms are songs as well. So when we sing those songs, when we look in the hymnal or we have a song in our heart that is giving praise, even if we want to create our own lyrics to a new song, then we can do so and praise God. So basically for me, the week's lesson and today's study is dealing with worshiping God and specifically the aspect of singing to God or singing about him to give him worship and praise. So much, Elder Vaughan. And so Elder Stacy, as we reflect on the, the lesson topic and subtopic, I would like you at this point to now read the memory text and see if you can link the memory text with the actual lesson topic and subtopic for us. What does the memory text say? It comes from Psalm 104, verse 33. Yes, Sister Annie, can we read in from the New King James Version? And it says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. And as you said, an Elder Vaughan would have ably described the subtopic as worship that never ends, which suggests, Sister Anik, that singing is a part of worship and it's something that we ought to do continuously. This Psalms is saying, as long as I have my being. Now I want to declare here, Sister Anik, I'm not a person who can sing melodiously. I make a joyful noise. And at times my children will say, mommy, you know, take a break. But when God has done something for you, Sister Anik, it's very hard for you to keep quiet. And so every day in my early, in my early stages, Sister Anik, I used to make up songs. 
you know i used to worship make up my own song and i would sing away and so when i heard at the topic today sing to the lord a new song i'm happy that i used to do that in my, my younger days sister annie because every day when you see god and you, and you feel his goodness towards you. You just want to sing praises. So I join with the psalmist that we should always sing to the Lord. And as long as we have our brain being, we must give him praise. So this is the connection I'm making to both the caption for the week and that of today. Amen. So we can worship God through song. And this is an important part of the Christian experience. And so I want to jump into the discussion now as we're looking at Sing to the Lord a new song, not an old song, but a new song. So we're seeing some sort of change here in our worship. What could be, what can we attribute this change to? To what can we attribute this change? I'm going to ask Elder Vaughan to read three different verses from three different Psalms. Elder Vaughan, you're going to read Psalm 33, verse 3. In addition, you will read Psalm 40, verse 3. And finally, Psalm 96, verse 1. Elder Stacey, you will then pick up from Psalm 98, 1, Psalm 44, 9, and finally Psalm 149, verse 1. And the question is, what is the common motive in these texts? What is the common motive? So Elder Juan, you will read the Psalms and tell us what they entail, what are they talking about, what is the common thread? And Elder Stacey, you will pick up and compliment if you see something worthy of complimenting Elder Juan. I'm sure you will. All right, so we're reading... I'm 33 verse 3 and I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, sing to him a new song, play skillfully with a shout of joy. Psalm 40 and verse 3 says, he has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. And finally, Psalm 96 and verse 1, it says, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Now, Sister Anik, the passages read here, they all have singing a new song. And God has put a new song in our mouth and praise God and so on and so forth. So I'm seeing here that the common thread is running through that when there is an epiphany or a revelation or a rekindling of the fire that you once had with Christ or the relationship that you had or some great knowledge have come to light or you have realized a particular situation or some goodness of God, and you want to give him praise, the new song that you're singing there will generate out of the heart. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean, from my understanding, it doesn't necessarily mean writing new lyrics to a song. It could very well include that as well. But also, it may just mean singing an old song that you had before, a psalm that you had before, and really seeing how the words and the entire psalm itself impresses your heart because of what God has done for you all or some change or some challenge you've gotten victory over. And you're singing that song now with new meaning, with new vigor, with new understanding. And so therefore, this is where the newness comes in. But these passages that I just read, they all speak to the new song to sing in our mouth. And when he says, the Lord has given me, he has put a new song in my mouth. That's the Lord there giving that individual, that person who's following Christ. Not so much, as I said, a new set of lyrics, but a new impression upon them in terms of, the goodness of God, the fairness of God, his majesty, his grandeur, his, 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 his loveliness. And so they're expressing in singing that song uh, like they've never sung it before. That's the newness in the song. At least that's the way how I see it. Amen. I agree. Oh, Elder Stacey, so you're going to pick up with the, your three psalms and then comment on the common motive that you find in all of the texts together. So we, we pick up from Psalms 98 verse 1 and it says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. And we move on to Psalms 144 and we're looking at verse 9. And it states, version, I will sing a new song unto thee, O God. Upon a psalm three and on an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. Then we move on to Psalms 149 and we're looking at verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. And it all ties in as what Elder Vaughan has suggested, that it is, you know, you coming out from some place, Sister Annie. For example, in the lesson study, it says here 
that the new experience of divine deliverance inspires the people to acknowledge the Lord as their creator and king. The common themes in the Psalms that tell of a new song are trust in God, praise of his wonderful works, and deliverance from affliction, among other things. So there are many reasons why people may want to utter, you know, that new song or that new, as Elder Vaughn says, it may not be the lyrics, it might be an arrangement, it might be, Sister Annie, sometimes the, the news is so sweet that you can't help just to shout. And maybe just shouting is a song indeed. And so we, we have to recognize that, that it's a reaction of, of just, just praising God, just praising God, a new song, a new arrangement, whatever the case is, it is just shouting where God has brought you from to where he has carried you. And one of the other things, Sister Anik, that I, I am compar comparing this today's lesson with is when the children of Israel was taken into Babylon. Remember by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down and then they were asked to sing the Lord's song. And they said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? They didn't have anything to sing about Sister Anik, you know, but God is inspiring us and says to us to praise him with a new song. Praise the name of the Lord. As you said that, I am just here reflecting and saying God is just worthy of our praise. We praise him not for so many different reasons, because he's the only one who is worthy and deserving of our praise. He is creator, he's redeemer, he's king, he is provider, he's shepherd, he is savior, he's friend, he's brother. God is our all in all. And these, you know, testimonies of his love, of his power, of his might must continuously be on our lips. As a matter of fact, Psalm 50, 23 declares that whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me. God is honored by the expression of our praise and thanksgiving and we are reminded this morning the importance of doing just that and so we move forward to the other part of our discussion as we continue to reflect on singing to the lord a new song we're now being asked to read isaiah chapter 42 verses 10 to 12 i'm going to ask elder vaughn to read that verse for us those verses and then sister stacy i'm at elder stacy please read revelation 5 9 and Revelation 14, 3. And the question that begs is this. What can we infer about the new song from these biblical texts? What can we infer about the new song from these biblical texts? All right, Isaiah 42, verses 10 to 12. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, Sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it you coastlands and you inhabitants of them let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voice the villages that Keda inhabits let the inhabitants of Selah sing let them shout from the top of the mountains let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands revelations and we're taking it from chapter 5 verse 9 and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And we move on to chapter 14 and we're looking at verse 3. And it reads, And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song. But the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Amen. Amen. So Elder Vaughan, what can what can you infer about this new song based on the passages that you would have read? Okay, I'm gonna specifically limit it to Isaiah 42. I'll leave Sister Stacy to deal with the other two. But what I want to say from Isaiah 40 to 10 to 12 about the new song, it says, Sing a new sing to the Lord, a new song, and his praises from the ends of the earth. And he goes on to talk about the different geographical locations or topo topographical locations that we ought to be singing from. So for me, I can infer from that that it's referring to singing the praises of God wherever, whenever you find yourself. In other words, praise God on the mountaintop, praise God in the valley, praise God at the coastline, praise God in your closet, praise God at work, praise God everywhere and anywhere. Let also even nature, I think there's a Bible scripture that talk about the leaves clap their hands, let nature also praise God. 
And so Isaiah 43 is talking about, say, let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let us just praise God, even if it's a, not a physical mountain, but a mountain of circumstances where we have been buried under. Let us praise God and worship him and sing a song unto his name. And so really in Babylon, and they were asked to sing the Lord's song. They should have sung the Lord's song. That's where you're supposed to sing the Lord's song to show forth the mercies of God. Even though you're in captivity, sing God's song. But they decided to hang their harps on the willows and said that we can't sing God's song in a strange land. It's not the physical location that makes the difference or the change. It's the God that's in you. It's a God that you serve. So, yes, we're speaking in hindsight here, and I'm sitting in 2024 talking about children of Israel by Babylon. But the fact of the matter is, one thing has to change, and that is God. Yes, okay. times of in modern, postmodern times now, and we're in different circumstances and so on, but God hasn't changed. He's the same God. And so we ought to be able to sing a song on the mountaintop, in the valley, wherever we find ourselves, sing a song unto the Lord. Even if it's a song in your heart, if it's not an outward, Sister Stacey says she can't really sing that well. Well, I can't judge that because I've never really heard Sister Stacey sing. But the fact of the matter is, whether you're just making a joyful noise unto the Lord, that's all you need. Sing a song, or you're singing internally, or you're internalizing your song, or you're keeping it in your mind. Have that positive attitude, that positive reflection upon what God can, has, and will continue to do for you, and you can sing that song. And let me just add here, Sister Annie, while uh, I turn it over to Sister Stacy just now, Elder Stacy, in that songwriter with a song and says, you know, holy is what the angels sing, and I will help them make the courts of heaven sing. But when I sing redemption story, the angels are going to do what? All they winked because angels never felt the joy, the songwriter says, that our salvation brings. That is the essence for me of the new song. The new song is an experience that we have gone through that nobody, nobody else has. And so we can sing a song and relate to it and have that relationship between Christ because that song impacts us in a way in which it doesn't impact anybody else. That, for me, is the essence of the new song. Amen. Powerful, powerful, powerful submission, Elder Vaughan. Especially that part that struck me is the fact that nobody knows and nobody will understand what my personal song, what your personal song or Elder Stacey or Elder Edson's personal song means because only it's between us and God himself and our personal experience with him. Elder Stacey, you can jump in now. Yes, and I just want to say to Elder Vaughan, I'm working on it. I'm praying that the Lord is going to bless me with the By God's grace, by God's grace, you keep practicing. <laughs> Elder Vaughan, I'm a part of our praise and worship team at church. You know, oh, there you go. There yes, you go. I'm, going, I'm seeing the improvement in Jesus' name. Amen. But I, I apologize to the congregation before I, when I'm singing solos, I apologize and say, just allow me to praise God. But be that as it is, looking at these verses, and I just want to touch on the song Elder Vaughn would have touched on, and that is the song telling you great minds things alike, you know, this song, holy, holy is what the angels sing. And throughout Revelations, the book of Revelation, that is, you would have encounters where you have angels responding in music, Sister Anik. And this is what is being shared in those scriptures, you know. And it says here in this particular song, number four, 425 in the, the hymnal, there is a singing up in heaven such as we have never known, where the angels sing the praises of the Lamb upon the throne. That is what we're seeing there, Sister Annie. They were saying, look, you are the one that can take this scroll. You know, they're talking about Jesus, the lamb, you know, and it says their sweet harps are ever tuneful and their voices always clear. Not like my voice is to Anik and sometimes even the best of singers, you know, we will have our down and our ups, but these angels were clear or that we might be more like them while we serve the master here. So, you know, when we talk a new song, you're talking about the perfect beings of heaven singing a song to worship God. And we who are redeemed should even sing more as Elder Vaughan would have said, you know, this song, this particular chorus is saying, Holy, holy is what the angel sings. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. Praise the Lord. But when I sing redemption story, Sister Annie, when you reflect on where God has brought you from, when you reflect on the goodness that you see God has blessed you with, they will fold their wings because guess what, Annie? They have never experienced experience the joy that we are feeling because of our salvation and so if the angels can sing and they don't have that redemptive experience 
I think we more so is supposed to sing a greater song, Sister Anik. Although we, we are going to one day join voices in heaven as we worship together the Lamb of God, as we worship our Savior, as we worship our Creator. And so this, this is just a song that, that just depicts what is happening there in Revelation. But added to that, that 144,000 when they started to sing sister Annie the angels could not join in but guess what we will join the angels when we are changed in the twinkling of an eye praise the name of the Lord praise the name of the Lord Elder Vaughan and Elder Stacey I just love you all I love you all badly I say it openly and with great hope you guys give me strength and encouragement and more hope in Christ who is to come now you know, as you reflect, as we reflect and we're thinking about the whole aspect of singing a new song, each of us have our own new song. And you said the lesson points out to us that no one can understand why we sing our new song, not even the angels, you know, because they have never experienced salvation. And as Sister White adds that when a person is touched by grace, a repentant sinner, a new song bursts forth from their lips. For he or she realizes that the promise of God has been fulfilled in his experience, that his tra transgression has been forgiven and his sins covered. Now, I can remember when I, before I became a Christian, Elder One and Elder Stacey, I'm sharing it here. You know, I used to go carnival and I used to play mass. Elder Stacey, one, two, three times I played mass. And, you know, on the streets, I didn't wear the bikinis, but I wore shorts. But thinking about it now, I couldn't do it now. I don't know how I, how I did it then, but I couldn't do it now. And I can say, hallelujah, praise be to God. Amazing grace. How sweet the song that saved a wretch like me, Anik. And that is my song. Because if I did not embrace God's love for me, I would still probably be playing mass all today or God knows whatever else. So my song is this. God is good. And every day I can find a new reason to thank him, even if it's just to wake up, wake me up or to, for opening up my eyes. Because there's so many, even in recent times, who are falling asleep. God is great and he's worthy to be praised. And let nobody shut us up, whether we're making a joyful noise like Elder Stacey or Elder Vaughn, or we're singing in lust, lustfully like myself. We are to give God our highest praise. Now, as we wrap up the lesson, I just want you, Elder Vaughn, to share with share with us if you were to sing a new song what would it be what would your new song be well i'll sit down and compose a song from scratch <laughs> which i have never done but in all seriousness though sister anik the song that i would sing as a new song and, and would and always Im impacts my life is um i was sinking deep in sing sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters he lifted me, now safe I am. And the word says, love lifted me. Like you, Sister Anik, but probably even more than what you did. I mean, I was in carnival every year for many years. And I was drinking alcohol and while well, I'm with the guys and all the other womanizing, etc., etc. yes. But that song actually that I just mentioned, that song broke my heart when I was doing some Bible studies and I couldn't control myself. I felt totally lost. I felt like I was on the sea drifting out on a raft somewhere to go into Neverland. And that song has always been in the seat of my mind that love of Christ lifted me from where I was, brought me into a new epiphany, a new realization to where I am. And that is a song that is embedded within me in terms of my transformation from where I was to where I am now. And so that is my old new song. You know, we like to sing sometimes. Some people like to use the old hymnal in the church and, and sing songs from that as if maybe the new one is not that good. But I can I can relate to some people looking at the old old hymnal and looking at the songs that they sang when they were younger and they probably joined the church or found Christ at that point in time. Those old songs or that particular old song may have a special place in their heart and they want to sing those songs and, 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 and relate to their conversion experience. So that would be my new song. Amen. God be praised. Thank you for sharing. Elder Stacey, what about you? Dwell on God's blessings in your life. If you were to sing a new song, what would it be? Sister Annie, I'm here trying to see if I could select one. 
you know when like in the mornings even after whispering hope when i'm finished listening i'll just allow my phone to go to you know a song that keeps me as i prepare for work and there's so many now that I'm learning of being a part of the praise and worship team that when we're fin I can't wait for Friday nights to come, Sister Annika, anymore, to just show up to practice, you know. As I said, just to make that noise. And even after Friday night, I go home, I can't sleep. I wake up with a song in my heart for Sabbath. And then after Sabbath, I'm on a high and I sing all through the week. And I guess I'm going to be evicted from my home because my children are getting fed up of me. Because I just can't stop singing Sister Annie. And, you know, I was in Carnival too. You know, I actually participated in mass when I was in primary school, you know. And, 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 and I'm so happy that God never allowed me to feel comfortable in that space, Sister Annie. Mm -hmm. You know, but he allowed us to get that experience so we can get that song in our heart. Praise the Lord. So we would not return back to what we used to do. And in addition, when we sing, we are testimonies for others around us, Sister Annie. And when we sing, we don't have to sing as Elder Vaughn said. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tune coming out of our voice. It could be a song in our heart that allow us to function a different way. We walk differently. We dress differently, Sister Anik. We talk differently, Sister Anik. We go to diff places that are not forbidden, Sister Anik. You know, it just changes and transforming us, transforms us. So it gl we glow outside. So Sister Anik, that is what God does to us when we have a song in our heart. So I challenge everyone out there to get a song or get songs because we're talking about new and new songs so every day can be a new one sister Anik. amen every day can be a new song and when we reflect upon god's grace and his love towards each of us the bible says in psalm 116 2 what shall i render to the lord for all his benefit towards me what should be our response travis green who is a contemporary worship leader also sings a song nara kele mo what shall i render to jehovah for he has done so many things for me. My song, my new song would be hymn number 198. And that is just to support what the psalmist says. And that is, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me, who caused his pain for me, who him to death pursued? Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, just die for me. Every time I hear this song, every time I sing it, I feel like tears are welling up in my eye. Unworthy and neat. Somebody should die for me. Jesus should die for me. That is a new song. Every time I sing it, I feel like it's a, I, I offer something else to God because I am grateful and there's nothing I could do to repay him for it. So this morning with Spring Hope family, what is going to be your new song? God has been good. He is good continually to us and he has taken us from different pains and affliction. It could be an aching knee, an aching back. It could be some um, disease or illness that maybe the doctor said, you know, there, there's no cure for. God has come through for us or persons that we know of. God has been there for us during our hard times with our, our spouses, our children, issues on the job, members in church. God has been good maybe with a warring neighbor. God has shown up. What has God done for you? Let us con continue to contemplate on God's goodness and let him uh, speak through his spirit to us so that we can sing to him and worship him. True worship, not false worship, in a true sense, worship him because we know what he has done for us. And as we go, Elder Warren, what is your takeaway? And what is your takeaway, Elder Stacy? All right, Sister Annie, thank you so much. My takeaway would be that the Lord is sovereign, the Lord is kind, the Lord is love. And he has given us the ability to sing, to compose music, to listen to music. The psalms or songs that were written and the children of Israel would have uh, recited these, would have sung them, and they would have sung them with a new meaning for those individuals who had that change or that revelation in their life. My takeaway for today's lesson is that let us continue to keep a song in our heart. Keep a song in our heart wherever we go. And let that song boil us up. But in as much as the song is going to boil us up, let us also remember that Jesus Christ is faithful and that he is very much alive today in the world and he's working on our behalf. And so as we go, life is difficult. We know life is challenging. 
but let us keep that song in our heart that we will be able to go through the days and the weeks and the months and the years as Christ continues to carry us through with him through to eternity. That's my takeaway for today. Amen. Sister Annika, I just want to leave us with the last two sentences on the Monday's lesson. And it says, true worship goes beyond sacrifices and offerings and reflects a living relationship with God that is always fresh and dynamic. In a sense, one could simply say that the new song is a new expression, even each day of our love and appreciation for what God has done for us and so if he has done anything at all sister Anik, then it compels us to have a new song to praise him as long as we have our being amen amen and you know when the earthly warfare is accomplished and the saints are all gathered home our first theme will be the song of the lamb the song of grace and redemption and this is the theme and this is the song christ all and in all I am looking forward to that great day when Jesus shall come and all of us can go to heaven where worship will really and truly never end. Do you want to be a part? Do you want to be a part of that number when the saints go marching in? I believe so. Let us purpose in our hearts to continue to serve God in spirit and in truth so that we too can be a part of that number. Happy Monday, everyone. May God bless you. Thank you, Elders Vaughn and Elder Stacey, for being with us here today on Whispering Hope. I pray that this study has been a blessing to each and every one of you. May you like this video, share this video, and definitely subscribe to our Whispering Hope platform so that you can continue to be blessed and grow with us as we expound and dissect the Word of God day after day. Happy Monday, and God bless you.